How should we feel about these rule changes? Well, it's a step in the right direction, but I'm not getting too excited about it because I'm not excited about the owners in the National Football League. As I stated yesterday on the 6 o'clock Sports Center, the NFL has a race problem. I'm going to say it again. The NFL has a race problem. Now, usually when you say something like that, people are looking at numbers, and then they'll look at the players, and they'll talk about how 65 to 75 percent of the players in the National Football League happen to be black. That's not my point. My point is the three black coaches and the four minorities, the Ron Rivera making the fourth, along with only two African-American GMs. Uh, my problem is individuals like Cliff Kingsbury, who clearly have no resume to be an NFL head coach, but somehow bypasses a slew of people, a lot of African-Americans, even more white folks that are qualified. Uh, somehow, some way, he gets the job. That's my issue. And that's why I said something has to be done about really publicizing the process. Uh, something having a, a somewhat of an ob objective criteria, whether it's offensive coordinators or special teams coordinators, you have to hold one of those positions before becoming a head coach or something along those lines where we're able to look at the process that is that 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 people have to endure to see whether or not they're qualified for these positions to begin with. We can get into all of that stuff about how guys need to better ingratiate themselves with executives and owners and vice versa. We can definitely explore that. But in the end, the first thing, the first order of business is making sure that people who are relatively unqualified, who happen to be white, don't get these opportunities. And to any white person out there that would challenge what I am saying, I ask a very, very simple question. And I hate doing it because I don't know Cliff Kingsbury. He's done nothing to me. I have nothing against him. I wish him nothing but the best. But because he got an NFL head coaching job, one of only 32 jobs in, the, uh, in, in, in professional football, I got to ask this question. If, if, if a black man had Cliff Kingsbury's resume, would he have ever had a head coaching job in the National Football League? The answer is an emphatic no. Everyone knows it. It's never happened in history. And these are the kind of things that we have to bring attention to. So the Fritz Pollard Alliance, uh, people like Troy Vincent and others in the NFL League office, along with folks that showed up at the quarterback summit at Morehouse College last June, uh, and a plethora of other people. This is a concern that needs to be spoken about. It needs to be broached. That's why we're doing it. This is a step in the right direction. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but I am not excited because they've shown an ability to circumvent or navigate themselves around anything that's been implemented in the past. I don't believe in them yet, as of yet anyway. The issue, this is a step in the right direction, as you said, Stephen A. It, it's, if it's part, like the Rooney Rule even originally is not meant to be a panacea. You know, here's this one thing that's going to end racism in the United States, because really what we're dealing with is the results of systemic racism. That's what this is. 30 of 32 owners in the NFL are European-American. Forget about white and black, European-American. There's one Korean-American, Buffalo Bills, and there's one Pakistani-American, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. But when we talk about diversity among owners, we're really talking about African-American because my people are from Eastern Europe, right? They came here willingly for a better life. And that is the story largely of immigrant, immigrant groups, including Pakistani Americans now and, and, and Korean Americans, who are, the other, who are the two groups represented here that aren't European American. Um, what we're really talking about is, is 400 years of systemic racism. That's why there are no black owners in the NFL. And that is, now, I'm, I don't mean to say that owners won't tend to be conservative. And by conservative, I don't even really, I'm not really talking political. I mean, are they, are they progressive? Do they want things to change? Or do they, would they prefer to maintain the status quo? Well, to own a team, you have to be a billionaire. So you have benefited from the status quo. Whatever your racial you know, composition or, or ethnic background, you've benefited from the status quo. So it will tend to be, I suspect, that, and I think life has proven this, has borne this out, people's experiences for the most part, that billionaires will be conservative in that sense. We like things the way they are. I'm a bill, you know, we're billionaires after all. So I'm not suggesting that were there African-American billionaires, things would necessarily be so much different. But I do think they would be different. I look at, at things ranging from Colin Kaepernick's peaceful and respectful protest, kneeling for the national anthem, you know, what was he really doing there? I've said it before. I'll say it again. 
the, the irony of that, because you could say specifically police brutality or interactions with communities of color, but really what that's about broadly is systemic racism. And the irony that he wasn't allowed to have a job because he was protesting, in a sense, the fact that he's not allowed to have a job unless he behaves a certain way, you know, is not lost on me. So, so does the Rooney rule help? It, sure. Does a revised version help? Sure. S provided it, there are other measures in place also, including putting talent in the pipelines. But the big issue is ownership. And, and, and there's still no African-American owners in the NFL. And I suspect if there were several at least, things would be a little better. I think you're right. You can't fix the problem uh, at in this organization if you don't start with the root and the root is the team the people who own the teams where i will disagree with you is the reason we don't have a black nfl owner is not because of necessarily i think it's a contributing factor the history of racism but it's because the nfl hasn't wanted one they haven't aggressively sought one like the idea that you have to be able to buy a That's team in cash is just factually inaccurate you don't even have to be the majority owner to be the managing partner al davis is a perfect example of that he owned that team up until 2005 before he had majority stake in that organization so or in the rant in the Raiders uh, team so if the NFL found it so important they need to be courting and grooming black owners for the next time a team comes up in the last couple times that a team came up they should have had that thought then so it's hard for them to look down at everyone else as the people who run the league and say you guys need to do a better job when amongst their own ranks they aren't doing a good job and I like I appreciate the fact that Stephen A was trying to think of um, solutions, but I do think that part of the problem is some of the solutions that are being presented are hurdles set in front of the candidates. I don't know that I like that as much as we address the, uh, the issue, which is the decision makers. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.